Well, good morning. good morning. As the song said, we have come together to increase that trust in Jesus as we go through this life, which as the song also said, there are a lot of things we don't understand in life, but we do know that God is with us and he provides the answers as we need them. We welcome our guests. We welcome our college students. We're glad you're here with us this morning. And we have five college students with us that are here to talk about Habitat for Humanity. So ladies, come on up. Uh, I wrote their names down because I would forget. We got Laurel and Autumn and Jen and Olivia and Mariah. One of them isn't coming up, but that's okay. I think that's Jen, right? But we're glad you're with us. So right up here, help yourself to the microphone. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for inviting us into your congregation. We're Concordia College's Habitat for Humanity campus chapter, and I'm Laurel. And I've gone on three trips in my past um, time being here at Concordia. I've gone to Albany, Georgia, South Carolina, or Charleston, South Carolina, and Trinidad and Tobago, which was an international trip. And I'm Mariah, and um, in 2017, I went to Bunnell, Florida, and then this year, I'm going to Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I'm Autumn. This is the first Habitat trip that I'm going on, and I'll be going to Birmingham, Alabama. Hi, I'm Olivia. Um, this is also my first trip, and I'm going to Birmingham, Alabama. And the mission statement of Habitat for Humanity overall is um, seeking to put God's love into action. Habitat for Humanity brings people together, and it all together builds homes, communities, and a hope. And um, the last part I felt like really puts together what Concordia College Habitat for Humanity does. Um, we bring together groups of students and we send them all to different places and they come back together as friends and connections they've made within their trips. Our chapter um, sends out five spring break trips to the southeastern states and um, the trips are Athens, Georgia, Birmingham, Alabama, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, Dade City, Florida, and Nashville, Tennessee. And our funding um, for the trip, collectively we have about 80 students and five trip leaders going on the trips and it costs roughly around $350 to send each student on this trip and that covers their transportation, their food, their lodging, and then the supplies that we use within the build site. And um, we are so luck um, lucky to have support from congregations like you, so we're looking for support to help some of these students go on these trips. And it wouldn't be, um, some of these trips wouldn't be able to have students go on without support from you guys. So thank you, and we are so lucky to be able to attend your guys' service. Thank you, ladies. We wish you God's blessings, and if you would like to support them or support Habitat to Humanity, talk to them, and you can do that. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you noticed, uh, there was a picture up there of one of our members. Did you catch Dan Biebighauser? He's a big, big uh, part of Habitat for Humanity, and I just want you to know that this year, he's going to be in all five locations at once. <laughs> he's amazing. He's Superman. No, not quite. I'm not sure where he's going, but he'll be at one of them. So, um, Some other things. Uh, on page uh, five, they're looking for a co-chair to help out with the March work list. So if you are interested in being a co-chair of that, please give Christine a call in the office. On page six, we have afternoon at the movies today. Uh, we have a movie called Alone Yet Not Alone, which is a movie uh, that was not filmed, but took place as a true story during the French and Indian War in our country and about how Christian faith helped a couple young gals survive the ordeal they went through back in those days. Um, next Sunday is Cookie Sunday for our college students. <clears throat> we could use a few more people to sign up to make cookies, and uh, the sign-up sheet is on the board out there. And last thing, two, uh, two more things. We did, uh, we're continuing our I Am In study down in the... Uh, Dining Hall Between Services, it's a study on Christian persecution around the world, specifically in Iraq. Uh, 
encourage you to come down and see what our brothers and sisters are going through as they're persecuted around the world. It will encourage you, but it'll also remind you and strengthen your faith as you share it each and every day. And the last thing, uh, if you are a caring shepherd, uh, Carol would like you to RSVP her to let her know you're coming to the meal next Sunday so they can prepare the proper amount of food. So let's rise and share a Christian greeting with one another. We make, oh, before I do, I forgot this in the first service, so back it up. Introduce our guest pastor today, Pastor Finsky. He's from Grand Forks, and we're glad he's here, and my apologies again. I, I have too many things on my head. <laughs> By this afternoon, my head will be empty, so. <laughs> Some of you out there go, up, my head's empty all the time. I know, but <laughs> let's make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Whose trust is in the Lord. Brothers and sisters, as we gather to hear the words and teaching of our Lord today, let us prepare by confessing our need to hear him. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we confess the sins of our minds, our speech, our actions, and even our inactions. We beg your mercy and forgiveness. We ask for your grace to fill us with faith in your Son, our Lord, to lead and guide us through all our days, that we rejoice in the new eternal life he has won for us by his cross and resurrection. Amen. In his mercy, God has given his Son to die for us and to give you the forgiveness of all of your sins. Upon this year, confession is a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Father in heaven, by your mighty word, grant to us every spiritual blessing in Christ your Son, that he guides us through our days, keeping us safe from everything that would distract us from his constant guiding and care. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our lector this morning is Sam Burns. And our Old Testament reading comes to us from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. And Jeremiah reminds us in this lesson not to trust in the ways of men. Instead, he encourages us to place our trust and confidence in the Lord then we will grow and flourish and bear fruit for God. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who depends on flesh for his strength and whose heart turns away from the Lord. He will be like a bush in the wastelands. He will not see prosperity when it comes. He will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes, its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. This is the word of the Lord. And we read uh, responsibly Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Therefore the wicked will, stand, will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, the way of the wicked will perish. Our epistle lesson comes to us from 1 Corinthians. The resurrection of Jesus from the dead is what it talks about and what joy this good news brings to our ears. 
In our reading, Paul reminds us of the importance of Christ's resurrection from the dead each and every day of our lives. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as the first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found, found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then also, who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. This is the word of the Lord. The choir will now praise their Lord with the song, Spirit, Shine on Us.
Thank you, choir, for reminding us about the light of God that shines in our light each and every day, in our life, excuse me, each and every day. We rise for the uh, responsive reading, the verse. And together, Alleluia, rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In this lesson, Jesus has a very large crowd that is with him, and his message is to his disciples. And it's very similar to the Beatitudes that he preached about during his Sermon on the Mount in the Gospel of Matthew. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem and from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by evil spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their fathers treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, For that is how their fathers treated the false prophets. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and we invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Any adults that would like to join them? Well, good morning. You guys are a little bit more awake than the 8 o'clock service. Good job. Good to see you. Hope you're all doing well. Well, you notice I have my bag with me again. You probably never guess what I've got in my bag this week. Nope. In my bag this week are all of your favorite foods. I have some really awesome stuff in here that you like. First, I have some broccoli. Mmm, num, 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 num. And then I've got an onion. Oh, yeah. Want to take a bite? No, no, no I want to take a bite? No, okay. Oh, boy, I got some other. Oh, this one. This is your. This got to be your favorite. Sauerkraut. Isn't that good? Oh, yeah. Awesome. I can see some of you guys just want to get at these. You'll have to wait till later, okay? Then I've got spinach. Mmm, boy, this is really good stuff. Olives. Mm. Oh, some of you like olives. Okay, well, I hit one there. And I've got asparagus. Mmm, num, num, num. And then a couple of them I would have had a cook up, so I just have pictures. The first one is one I really love, and I know that you're just going to love it too. Liver and onions. Mmm, boy. I wish I could have the aroma. You guys would just be oh so happy. And the last one, do you know what this is? Sushi. Sushi. Do you know what sushi is? Raw fish. Doesn't that sound appetizing? Mmm. Fresh out of the lake to your mouth. Num, num, num. Well, obviously those are not your favorite foods. In fact, when I was a kid, most of those weren't my favorite foods either. You know what my favorite part of the meal was? Dessert. The very last part. Yeah, the good stuff. What's your favorite dessert? Yeah. Ice cream. Ice cream. Do you like to smother with chocolate? No, you don't like chocolate? What's that? Vanilla. Oh, you just like vanilla. Okay. What else? Chocolate. Just plain chocolate? You sit and eat chocolate? Oh, you want chocolate on your ice cream? No, I mean like actually eat chocolate. Eat cho- oh, you mean like candy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's that? Me. You is your favorite dessert? Okay. <laughs> if you want a bite of them, come on up later. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, ice cream with fudge. Cookies. What's your favorite kind of cookie? Chocolate chip. Awesome, that's my favorite kind too. They gotta have at least 30 chocolate chips in each cookie, right? Yeah. Cake. Like birthday cake especially? Yeah. One more. You? Okay. We got two guys we're going to munch up here on. Well, you know, another one I like is pie. Oh, I forgot you. What do you like? Brownies. Brownies. Hear that, Mom? An order for brownies today for lunch, okay? Yeah. Well, desserts are awesome. They taste great. Well, in our Bible reading, you know, it talked about heaven and it talked about Jesus rising from the dead. Now, Heaven and Jesus rising from the dead. Well, heaven is going to be better than desserts. Can you imagine that? Heaven's going to be better than desserts. Yeah. In fact, when we compare, we could, could compare heaven to desserts, but we kind of compare living on this world to uh, all your favorite foods like liver and onions. Because in this world, we have, we have problems, don't we? How many of you like to get shots from the doctor? How many of you like to go to the dentist and have your teeth drilled? No, you don't like that either. How many of you like to get sick? That's no fun either, is it? You like to get sick? And then you, <laughs> you miss school. <laughs> You're, you got all kinds of good answers today. Awesome. Okay. But yeah, there's lots of bad things on this earth. But when we get to heaven, there's only going to be good things. And you know what the best thing about heaven is? Jesus. Jesus. We'll get to see him all the time. So let's bow our heads and let's pray. Jesus, Jesus. I'm excited I'm about going to heaven. Thank you for dying on the cross and rising from the dead so I can go to heaven when I die. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Thanks for coming up. And I hope you don't get all my foods for lunch, okay? Except brownies, Ben. <laughs> Our sermon song today is based on the words of the gospel and the Sermon on the Mount, and it's sung to the tune of Come Thou Fount, so please join us as we sing together.
invite you to open your hymnals to the inside front cover and join me in the prayer at the very bottom of that page under the heading for blessing on the word. Together, Lord God, bless your word wherever it is proclaimed. Make it a word of power and peace to convert those not yet your own and to confirm those who have come to saving faith. May your word pass from the ear to the heart, from the heart to the lip, and from the lip to the life, that as you've promised, your word may achieve the purpose for which you send it. Through Jesus Christ, my Lord, amen. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, when they exclude you and insult you, and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. For that's how their fathers treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already achieved your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for that is how their fathers treated the false prophets. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Who wouldn't want to be blessed? And who in the right mind would want to be condemned? For some people, they misunderstand these words of our Lord that we heard in our gospel lesson. Some would like to say that he's attempting to right the wrongs of society, maybe trying to level the playing field between the haves and the have-nots. In other words, if you're rich, you have too much, and you're greedy. You should give your wealth away so you can become poor, and then you'll be blessed. No, that's not what Jesus is saying at all. This kind of thinking turns his words of blessing that we receive into commands that are to be followed. And that's not what Jesus is saying at all in our text. He's not promoting poverty, nor is he advocating socialism, nor is he bashing wealth. His message here is no different from the rest of his ministry. He speaks words of warning at times and other times words of comfort. He does declare woe to those who are rich, well-fed, and laughing, but to simply focus on those words would be missing the point entirely. Instead, we have to look at why Jesus is grieved and concerned about those rich, well-fed, laughing people. He says that these people will mourn and weep, that they will go hungry, and that they have already received their comfort in this life. In other words, while they've spent their days in supposed contentment and happiness, they've neglected what's coming in the future. They've focused on the here and now, but they've ignored the forever. They've enjoyed many earthly blessings from God, but they've failed to thank God. They've trusted in themselves to find happiness and blessings and made that the focal point of their life. But they didn't trust in God. So Jesus said to them, you may be enjoying life now, but watch out, the day will come when you will have no comfort, no pleasures, only pain and sorrows will afflict you. And it must have been scary for some of the people who heard these words when they were first spoken. Perhaps it crushed them in their heart if they weren't so hardened. But let me ask you this morning, do you think those words apply to us today? Does it scare you to think that you might occasionally treat God in such a fashion? That you have more emphasis and priority in the day-to-day -day things than in the heavenly things? Does that concern you in the least? We all like to have comfort, we have to admit it. We all like to be happy and find pleasure and success in what we do. But have we crossed that very fine line? Living for today with no thought of God or eternity. Have we squeezed the Holy Spirit 
out of our lives while trying to squeeze so many other things into them. And the truth is, we have to admit, at times, we have. We've done it with our work, with our schedules, with our children. Time and time again, we've put all these things ahead of God. And then we wondered why things don't work out like we planned, why it was so hard, what we were missing. Woe to us for treating God that way. Woe to us for concentrating too much of our time and our efforts on the here and now, for we have sinned. Notice what kinds of people came to Jesus that day. They came from all over the countryside. They came with all sorts of problems, evil spirits that needed to be exercised, sicknesses and diseases. They came to Jesus trusting that he would take care of them, and indeed he did. So we join that throng of people who sit at the feet of Jesus so that he may speak to us and help us. We come to him with the same issues staring us in the face, knowing that we failed to put our complete trust in the Heavenly Father and have often chosen our own way in our lives instead of his way. Yes, we have guilt that we carry and fear God's punishment. And Jesus looks out at that crowd of people and says, Blessed are you, for I have come to do my Father's will. I have trusted in his plan for me. I've lived a perfect life and will die for you. Your sins are washed away. Your biggest problem you'll ever have is fixed. You shall not go to hell, but rise with me to the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you. But you know, our Lord doesn't stop there with those people. Suddenly you realize he's looking at you directly with a smile on his lips and eternal love in his eyes. As he says to you, blessed are you. And then looking deep into your soul, he says, I know that you have problems. I know that you struggle. I know that you bounce back and forth from trust to doubt, from hope to fear. But I promise you, the price I paid on the cross for your sins was sufficient, more than enough to cover your sins. And you are blessed because I have blessed you and will continue to do so. So don't worry any more about that, for I made you holy and you are mine. Now we can understand what Jesus is saying and these seemingly odd statements seem to make perfect sense. Blessed are you when you are poor. Why? Because no matter what income level, Maybe here on earth, when Christ returns in glory, we will have riches beyond imagination. Blessed are you who hunger. Why? Because through trust in Jesus, we will find satisfaction in knowing that our salvation has been won. Blessed are you who weep now. Why? Because all the tears and sadness that we experience in this life will forever end when we are brought into heaven. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are, or what shape you're in, Jesus Christ, our Lord, we are blessed more than life itself. You see, there is an answer for every question we have, every problem we face, every pain and stress we undergo in this life. And that answer flows from the cross. When your life seems uncertain at times because of school, job uncertainty, remember that Christ has done for you. Remember his great love for you then remind yourself of his promise that he will be with you always to the very end of the age. His love won't fail. And then the problem that you're facing won't seem so big anymore because God has got it all under control. And you're able to rejoice because God has blessed you. When you struggle or fight or have challenges in your relationships or marriages and you want to know how to turn things around, then turn to the cross. Confess your own failures and remember that Jesus has paid for them as well. Read in God's word what he says about marriage and how you are to love your spouse with the love that Christ has for us, his church. And then you're ready to begin things anew and make things aright, remembering that Jesus says, blessed are you. When family life gets so unbearable because of time constraints or busy schedules or schoolwork or sickness or snow days, turn to Jesus. Remember that he has taken care of the most important business and that on one day you will be with him in heaven. Go to him who has given you everything and ask him for more strength, more faith, more wisdom, more understanding, and he will grant it to you. 
And then you can say once more, I am blessed. So don't let your hearts be troubled any longer as you cling to Christ. Refresh your soul every day with the knowledge that your sins are forgiven and eternal life is yours. Hear Jesus, your Savior, say to you, blessed are you. It's because of God's love manifested in our Lord Jesus' death and his resurrection that we have forgiveness in life and salvation. And because of that, we know that no matter what we face in this life, the best is yet to come. Amen. May the peace of God which passes your understanding keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Please join with me as we confess our Christian faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We honor our Lord with our best, our first fruit thank offerings. During the offering, please fill out the friendship card. Please stand as we continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Thanks and praise to you, almighty God, for all the blessings of your good creation, and especially for the blessings of your mercy and grace by which we know your promise of forgiveness for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep us, we pray, in the one true faith and grant true unity of faith in your whole church. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless the preaching of your word and the administration of your sacraments that many come in repentance and faith to your blessings and be delivered from sin and unbelief. Lord, in your mercy. Grant peace and unity in our nation and around the world that your word have free course, calling all people to the blessing of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. By your blessing, strengthen and enable all who labor, especially those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and keep in safety all who travel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, for the sick, especially Lee, Dwayne, Joanne, Norma, Sean, Doug, Kayla, Steve, Bernie, Maya, Glenn, Eric, and a family member of a college student with dementia. For the dying and those who care for them, surround them with your blessing of health and healing. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed are those who die in the Lord and rest from their labors. Keep us in unity with all who have gone before us with the sign of faith. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give him thanks. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. 
Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you've had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. We especially thank you this day for your saving word, by which we have your wisdom to guide us in the blessing of new life by faith in Christ, your Son. For his sake, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive Renew and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
to you, O Lord, for your mighty healing word and for our lives renewed through the forgiveness of our sins and the gift of the hope of the resurrection. Keep us in this hope all our days, looking forward to your deliverance and eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his favor upon you and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn. Blessed be 